Right. All right. Bye bye, Gilbert. <laughs> you tried, dude, but then you ate my USB cable and you ripped up the carpet. Well, it's nice to meet you, Ferdy. Um, Lovely I'm, to meet you, Stefan. Thank you. I am. Um, I am sure you've heard this from everyone who's seen it. But Mank is really, really good. <laughs> it, is, it is really good, isn't it? I'm, are you so I'm really glad you've seen it. That's fair. Yeah, I watched it yesterday. Um, I watched it just before the football. So I had a nice. I'm a Spurs fan. We won four 0 last night. So. Uh, uh, I know you did. Yeah. Oh, are you are you Arsenal? No, I'm a Villa oh, fan, so I'm Villa not fan? a threat. I'm not a threat to anyone. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to begin by asking, of course, you're playing Irvine Falberg. Um, how, how, how much was that available? And did you, I mean, did you, because obviously David Fincher has this so meticulous, it's very much about the world he creates. Did you bother to do much research into the real man? Or did you treat him, this character, very much as a character in a David Finch story? Well, it's funny, is it? There's, there's kind of um, a bit of both, because I wanted to um, do justice to the historical Irving, you know, the 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 man that did exist uh, and was kind of amazing for all his um, differences that we have politically and, you know, behaviourally, potentially. Um, he, he was an amazing man. So I, I did um, as much research as I could, which which involved reading a couple of a couple of books, one in particular by Mark Vieira, which is which is fantastic. Um, and just reading anec anecdotes about him, stories about him, because he was he was very uh, you know what kind of what defined him was that he didn't he didn't want the attention to be on himself so there actually isn't there is very little of of him about you know there's there's about two or three clips of him talking and um, there's a few photos and um then there's then there's millions of stories about him so i i did the research in in that shape but it's always that's of course that's reported stuff isn't it so it's always a little bit different to being inside the man's head himself and as a very private man that that wasn't really accessible um i also you know so i did what i could i went to visit his house in uh in santa monica but they, they wouldn't let me in because people live there weird um i had the the real chore of watching films that he produced which is really tough uh no, it's, that's that's the dream, isn't it? And I um, watched some amazing documentaries from uh, from a, the early '80s about early Hollywood because those old docs are amazing because they've um, they've got people who were there. You know, if you if you were like twenty or thirty at the, in in the in about 1930, then you were seventy or eighty in 1980. So these people who were being interviewed were were there, and it was that was incredible. But then on the uh, sorry, this is a rambling answer to your to your question. But it was um, then, of course, there's the there's the world that that Finch is making, uh, which you want to serve, which uh, is not always hundred percent aligned with. It's always it's always in line in sort of parallel with the research you've done and the character work. But you've got to remember that you're you're a cog in a machine, and and you're part of the story and. As much as you might want it to be, you're not. I'm not there going. Oh, sorry, David, David, David. This film should actually be called Irv. This it should be about me, really. So, actually, I think of it. You know, you, you you're serving um, the story, and then the third part of that is that um, that story is is totally seen through the eyes of Mankiewicz. So, so um, in a way that that gives you a bit of. Well, it gives us as storytellers a bit of freedom because um, it's not try it's not pretending to be pure historical document. It's uh, it's very much the memories and the warped memories, you know, as as subjective as memory is, um, of a man who was fascinating and amazing and and wonderful, but also totally self destructive and bitter and. Um, and hurt by these people. So the versions of the of the people around Mank that appear in the film, I think, and, and David thinks and Gary thinks, um, are the versions that sit in Mank's memory that go on to sort of to inform the people he comes up with in Kane. And so, sorry, long long story short, yes, I, I tried to be um I tried to honor the the real guy, but um I wasn't trying to do like a carbon copy of him. 
I mean, you mentioned being a cog in a machine. I mean, it's some mm. machine. But when you're sort of yeah. there and you're you're looking around and you've got you know the likes of Gary Oldman on set and you've got David Fincher behind the monitor, it, are you able to in those moments think right? This is this is because I'm mean, guess when, when when every young actor, this is what they want to be a part of a project, just like Mank. Or, yeah. or is that something that you can kind of kind of only really after appreciate appreciate sorry after the experience is over? Are you able to to feel those moments of like shit? This is great. Yeah. Uh, absolutely every single day to be honest i mean i i'm because i'm kind of a, a bit of a fanboy at heart you know i um you gotta sometimes you want to try and be a bit cooler than you are but i'm i'm decidedly not no i i i absolutely loved it i think the bit that you could fall i think where you could fall down would be as if you if you're there and you go right i've made it i've made it now this is it this changes everything because you know like i i i may only be Thank you for calling me young, by the way. Uh, I may only be... <laughs> I only say that because we're the same age. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I may be relatively young. Um, but I'm old enough to know that... And and sort of, you know, I've, I've got family in the in the business, of course. So I, I, I know that you... That the concept of making it is 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 false. It doesn't really exist. So what I, what, what I did manage to do is just enjoy every bloody second. I was just would just step on there and be surrounded by, as you say, by, by David, by the crew who were just like everyone, everyone at the absolute top of, of their game. Um, and all the actors, um, and just the environment of just going, right, this is, this is Premier League. This is Champions League. This is, this is amazing. And, um, and I said one day, I think to Arliss Howard, who plays Louis B. Mayer, who is just, uh, he's the dude of all dudes i fucking love him um i think we we were on one of those sets at hearst castle sam san simeon outside where we're it's the scene where they're shooting the what they call the home movie but it's where you meet a lot of us it was actually a reshoot i think um and i i it was just this amazing sort of crisp foggy day just outside of la on this massive set and i sort of said to Alice, as we walked on something like just like wow look at this this is amazing isn't it just just you know whatever just crap was coming out of my little internal monologue and he was he was just like dude dude you need to keep that feeling never let go of that feeling because like as soon as you get cynical about this stuff that's the day you should that's the day you should give up because you've got to keep that joy of of going of looking around you and seeing how lucky you are to be there and how great it is and you've also um, you've got to remember that he said. Remember also remember that feeling at like six p.m. today, when when we're tired and stressed and we haven't got the scene and we're doing take sixty of this shot, whatever. He's like, just just keep checking in with that feeling of shit. Look at this. This is great, isn't it? Because um, it, I think it's fuel, and uh, and uh, I never want to be the kind of actor who turns up on a set like that and is like, yeah, sure, you know, get, bring me my coffee and take me to my trailer and, and I'll do my bit when I'm called on. I want to I want to be kind of childlike about it every day. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's interesting because I because I've been I mean I'm not at the same degree, but I've obviously spent lots of times on sets, not in front of the yeah. camera, but doing kind of e uh, behind yeah. the scenes videos. Yeah, of course. And it is one of those things where um, I think I've been doing it for about ten years, and I did slightly get to a point. I was on set this for a week this year in Lithuania in the freezing cold in, in February, and I was waiting at five a.m. being like, I can't keep doing this. And then obviously now we've had the year that we've had. Yeah. I now I, I, I now I, I long for those moments more than I ever yeah. have. Yeah. You, you long for you long for the um uh the ability to have a little grumble about how tired yeah. you are and about how you just like a lion god wouldn't it be nice to be able to moan about having to get up and do something yeah, um because obviously i mean it's been a mad year for everyone but your job is so much about being around people and obviously yeah. this year has been so has been so difficult to to capture those moments have you really missed it i've really missed it i mean to, to i'm i'm quite um quite good at i'm sort of dangerously good at coping so first few months i was the guy who like to all my friends was being the uh you know um motivational coach like you know come on we'll all get up we'll do our exercise it's okay uh, this is we're going to be doing this till easter next year it's the long haul so let's pace ourselves it's gonna be um <laughs> well slowly dying inside um so i found the, the first bit worryingly okay and i'm and i'm relatively introverted anyway i'm, I'm quite good in my own company um but this 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 second lockdown i found a bit harder um that a lot of the for all sorts of reasons you know the sort of camaraderie of of us all going right we'll we'll dig in and get through this that kind of dissolved 
I I think somewhere around Barnard Castle, um, and um, and also the the days are a lot shorter and and it feels like it feels a bit like um, I don't know maybe I don't know if you agree but to me it feels a bit like um, we're in some kind of war that the end is in sight like the writing's on the wall for the virus at some point the virus is going to have to surrender and the vaccine will win but in the meantime they're still dropping bombs and people are still getting killed. And so it's like this weird slog. Uh, but but professionally, I mean, having this has been just something to to cling on to. We finished it early March. Well, we wrapped early March. David's been working ever since, obviously, and and and, and the rest of the team. But like us, us love is finished in March. Um, and and then the world stopped as we knew it. And so it feels like this strange pause where like I wrapped yesterday and the film's coming out next week. Um, but to, to have to have that coming up has been a massive gift for um, something to, to hold on to. And I've been able to do other bits of work and voiceover work and a bit of filming. I built a little built a home studio here um, for for voiceover stuff, which has been great. Um, but I think it and I got a dog and I got a dog. So I've got something to talk about. Um, it's i i found it hard sort of spiritually for our industry you know like as you say we we survive the whole thing is built on on giving to audiences giving to people sharing um you know so if it's filming then that's you know that's that then the audience is later but it's still a shared experience in a cinema or if whenever possible um and on set as a crew and and with the theater you know obviously it's a it's a live shared experience so like that's the very soul of it and it's been it's taken such a massive hit and it's going to be so important for people i think when when we can go back to cinemas um and theaters and and places like that and concert halls and gig venues uh it's going to be so important because we're going to need it like we're going to need that shared communal experience aren't we like we're going to need to be able to <laughs> be close enough to people to to smell them and 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 to share something and and we've got to look after uh the people who are having a really crap time now i think and i've been you know i've been fortunate to have had this this job but there's so many there's so many people who are working in theater uh and or or in tv shows or jobs that hadn't started yet films that hadn't started that just never happened so i've been lucky to have this just uh, the thought of this of being in a fucking Fincher film um, that's going to exist at some point in 2020 has has been a bit of a lifesaver. Yeah, God, can you imagine if it was like halfway through the shoot in mid? In oh, don't, 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 happen. don't, because there's so many of those that <laughs> did know, happen. Um, yeah. So, and we were all like, when I went back to do these reshoots, end of February, beginning of March, and we were kind of, I'd just come back from Japan, and people were kind of avoiding me like Neo in Bullet Time, at the end of the Matrix, just like I was firing off. Uh, covid particles and and even then i was like it's it's japan it's not china guys like it's not i i'm not i didn't come from wuhan i've come from japan but little did we know just how virulent it was then and and how behind all the governments were but yeah like a couple couple of weeks more and we wouldn't have we wouldn't have reshot one of the main scenes of the film so there'd be a very different film coming out uh, obviously talking of um uh uh, you were talking about takes earlier when you get on a long day when you have lots of takes david fincher is renowned for his many takes are the rumors true is, is it is, is i mean obviously I, I was going to use the word arduous that's the wrong word but are they as are the days as long um in the days of- their days are um f- uh, the days are full yeah you know <laughs> there's there's very little time spent not acting um which is no bad thing like they're, they're no, it's not arduous, but it is uh, intensive, if not intense. Like you know, you 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 work hard. Yeah, there's a lot of takes. Um, I think the most on this film was high seventies for a shot, seventy something for a shot, and that was the that was the scene with Louis B. Mayer doing the the walk and talk round MGM Studios. So it was you know I think Arliss got quite a few blisters on that one because they're doing it seventy something times. But uh, David said his record's one hundred and four. Um, and that was on one of the stunts on Panic Room. I know. So when I said, "Are we gonna, are we gonna break your record?" He he swore at me and said, "I'm never going near my record ever again." But uh, yeah, seventy something. Like it, it's a lot, but um, 
it didn't feel it never felt um uh, excessive because partly because you just trust you trust his taste and i trust his eye and ear more than like anyone's because he w the first few takes are about the sort of the the big visual language about lining up the shot perfectly about lining up the lighting perfectly tweaking it to within a tenth of a percent you know the first few takes are about about setting up the visual language and getting it perfect and then he just lasers in on your um performance and you it's and then it's so it's all about the acting and getting it right um and it never feels excessive it never feels like too much you're working hard but um for the right reasons if, you know, you mentioned obviously what a big fan you are of David Fincher, like anyone, yeah. well, like we all are basically. But I just yeah, wonder yeah. if you've, if you think your relationship of his work has now changed. Now you've been a part of the machine. If you were to go back and say watch, you know, Seven, or you go go back and watch one of his, you know, even a Social Network, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Think now you might perceive them in a slightly different way. Now you know the kind of the way it operates. I, that's a really interesting question because I have rewatched them since actually just for fun. I watched a couple while I was out there because I just I thought if there if ever there's a time to re-enjoy these films it's now. And watched what did I watch recently again? It was the it was ten years since Social Network, wasn't it? So I rewatched that and uh, my girlfriend had never seen Zodiac, so I showed her Zodiac. Um, I don't know if my because I don't think it's like a Wizard of Oz, you know, behind the curtain thing and you see the tricks. It's not like that. I've actually, I've kind of got a deeper appreciation, I think, because um, as well as the sort of perfect, his his unbelievable knack for storytelling and, and doing it through subtlety, there's, there's the knowledge of the grind that he puts into it. And, um, and, the, and the sort of, for all his confidence in his, in his art, there's the humility actually that he's got about it that he just wants to do it right and um there's there is no sense of of like the guru of you know fincher being like you know i just i know how to do this so just do what i say and we'll make a good film it's not like that it's there's there's we rehearsed for a good few weeks in his office and it was just sitting talking reading tweaking changing a word here changing a word there trying to find the rhythm of something and it's really collaborative and you do have total trust in him because he, as I said before, he's just got this, his taste is, is kind of immaculate. Um, but I think, I think I like the films probably more. And it's funny talking to like when the little fan in me came out when I, when he'll just sort of drop one of his films into conversation, like he'll be talking about some moment on Fight Club or some, some little bit in Panic Room or something. And, um, and the little teenager and me will come out and say, oh, I, 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 oh, David, I have to say, I stole, I stole one of the speeches from Fight Club for my GCSE English exam. And, I, and, uh, and you, you know, there's a world where he'd just be like, oh, cool. Or a world where he, he'd go, that's amazing. But then Fincher being the, the movie maker that he is and the perfectionist, he'll be like, oh, I didn't like that scene. I didn't like that scene. I should have, I should, I'll tell you, this is how I should have done that speech. You know, he's brilliant. Or you talk about anything, like we, we were talking about, what were we talking about? Um, Vertigo, I think we were talking about, uh, because I think we were just talking about, you know, the 100 or whatever, and, you know, it often flicks between Citizen Kane at number one and Vertigo. And, and he was like, okay, here's my pitch for how I'd make Vertigo. Like, are you, are we actually going to get like, sitting down with a drink? And he goes, okay, so, and he just pitches his version of, of, of Vertigo. And you're like, oh, you really are pure you're a pure filmmaker you know he sees everything as as a filmmaking challenge and I, that's just so glorious to be around because he's a lover of the 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 form more than anything you know he really adores it and and he's i think he's been smart not to just make this film a simple love letter to cinema because he you get that for free with the script and the setting and he and and because he's such a good filmmaker but but he 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 gives you that then then underneath I think, I hopefully you agree, is a is a sort of deeper examination of of America at the time. Yeah, um, and it's, it's, it's a bit of a wanky question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Oh yeah, no, I'm a wanker, so do. Yeah. <laughs> but I was wondering if having now watched Mank back, which I'm sure you have done, um, if times. some of yeah. if some of your memories from the days on set are now in black and white. 
if that makes sense. Oh, that's such a good question. <laughs> I don't know if it's wanky. Um, wow. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, my scenes with um, scenes with Gary in his office. They those in particular are. I think the lighting was very. I mean, it was shot noir. You know, there's a lot of harsh side lighting, and and our our clothes are kind of we're kind of monochromatic ish um in 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 the room so it's easier to sit but i definitely see those scenes kind of in black and white the the outdoor ones i don't but isn't that funny it's like they say you dream in black and white don't they um but yes and also uh, another reason for that is that the and this is you you may have asked a wanky question i'm going to give you a nerdy answer um the the camera that they had that they had built for them by red um were is a monochrome can camera so it was it was not post converted so everything on the monitors was black and white so everything we so you know with it and and everyone because it's a very high tech set everyone had ipads with um which was getting playback on it all the heads of department so you could always see a, whenever you saw a glimpse of the film or whenever you saw what was being lined up in camera it was already in black and white so um it kind of some of that imaginative work was already being done on set um but yeah i think that's a really cool question and yes i do part certainly part of it i think of in black and white now yeah i'm um, so just wondering about obviously your own uh looking at your career because being on a movie set it sounds like you yourself have got a real passion for just the whole form uh, as well you know i'm just wondering if uh, because of obviously your your father's job if you did you spend much time on film sets as, as a kid were you were you were you privy to that kind of environment from a young age i know it's more um, the base from what i've read yeah, I, it was about half an hour. I, I, I kind of, I mean, I, I, I spent more time on on film sets than 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 most peop most people's kids do, obviously. But I, not loads. It was kept, it, that world was kind of kept separate for general sanity. I think you know, um, to a avoid me being one of those kids that just waltzes around like he owns the place. It always felt like uh, a real treat. I've got. A very early memory of well, actually, I don't know when. Well, we have to do some quick googling of what year species species is ninety five, I think, isn't it? So it's probably ninety three, ninety four. Uh, of going to visit Dad on set when he was doing species, and it was it was his last scene, I think. And he had, I saw him in makeup, and he had this like trail of blood down his head, and I would have been five or six, and I would remember just being like, "Don't like it, absolutely don't like it." I've, I was like, "Why has Dad got?" Blood on his head, they're like, oh, because uh, he gets banged on the head with a gun. I was like, right, well, obviously, this is horrible and I hate it. So I don't want to be here anymore. Take me away. Thanks for, you've just, you've just, you've just shown the death of my dad. I don't like it. Um, so I, I was on a couple, but not loads. Uh, and I did, I've got another memory. Oh, no, it's, it's the Times memory because I was even smaller of being taken to see some, I think some Star Trek being filmed. Patrick Stewart and uh, I was I got scared of Klingons I think I got scared of aliens and I had to get take I was ruining I cried during a take and had to be taken out um so I, so that's not real a real answer to your question I I kind of they they weren't totally alien to me film sets but they it, it wasn't like I could uh, understand everyone's role on it or, or felt like I was sort of um, destined to be on one. It was it was like going to a fire station and seeing all the cool firefighters and the and the pole and the engines and not knowing quite how it works, but thinking, yeah, this is wicked. Have your um, have your parents seen Mank yet? And if not, have you got a kind of way to commemorate its release next week on Netflix? Yeah, it's so Zoom or something afterwards. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we were we were meant to be doing it in LA of course and I I got tickets for mum she was going to fly out and go to the premiere and she was so excited and so it was, like, it was amazing obviously that's not happening but she was um we I, I were we were shielding because my mum had to have a, an operation recently um so she was staying with us for a while and Netflix sent the final cut over so we did a little mini premiere here we've got I, I uh I'm one of the wankers who has projector, not a TV. So 
Put the projector on, yeah, turn have the lights. Project- if I was in Mank, I'd have a projector in my <laughs> Yeah, they're great. They are great. Also means you watch less crap TV because yeah. just the act of pulling the screen down is like, right, we're watching it. Um, so, yeah, but like, you know, had a little bottle of champagne or, you know, Aldi sparkling wine. Um, pulled the screen down, turned the lights off, toasted it. And and sort of treated it as a little mini premiere, and it was that was really that was that was kind of special because um, it it felt like a little a mini event, even if it was only three of us and a dog. Um, it it felt special, and it was the first time I'd seen it on the big screen. I'd watched it on, I'd watched earlier cuts on my laptop, and I'd watched it ungraded. And the grade, as you will have seen, it adds a lot because he's he's sort of deliberately destroyed part of the. Um, part of the film um yeah so there's that uh dad hasn't well if dad has seen it then he's been very rude and hasn't told me um but i'm gonna i'm actually gonna call him today and, and tell him that i don't know if he's logged that it's coming out next week um he'll probably say i, I shall go and buy the vhs um oh, well, when you he, call, he, he still owes me a five but no, i'm joking i just i just like the idea does he no no I'm oh, yeah he owes he owes me an orangina. Um, <laughs> like the, like the have you spoke? Have you met him? I, I've interviewed him twice, actually. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Great. He's always been great. But I think it was. What What do you interview him on? Uh, well, what, what, sadly, one of it was for the night of the museum free. So even though it was nice to meet him, it wasn't obviously. It didn't get. It didn't give us a chance to really dig deep into the. Material. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. And then one was Jungle Book. Yeah. Oh, wicked! Yeah, yeah that was so that was, I, I love such that. a good film. That isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoyed meeting him that day because you could just tell when you meeting him for that as opposed to sort of nice museum, he just had this real passion for the. Oh, he the loved book. it, and he loves John Favreau as well. I mean, who who doesn't? But he's like, I think he'd kind of go to war for him. He loves him. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a he's a lovely man. Um, which, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but yeah, my. Final, my <laughs> yeah, imagine if I was like, no, he's not. I don't like. Him. <laughs> but my uh, my final question, even though I could literally go on uh, all day, but it's a. Uh, Please do. I've got nothing to do apart from buy a replacement USB cable. <laughs> it was sort of looking ahead for next year. This year's been a bit of a, uh, a mad one, of course. I just wonder if you have much in the pipeline or what your kind of ideas and ambitions are for the for the year ahead. Um, my ambitions are to to get, get go back to another working film set. Um, to keep surviving, I I. I don't know, to be honest, is the, is the simple answer. I could do all sorts of bluff about how, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for deals to conclude, but I'm not. I mean, I've, 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 there's a couple of things which I'm um, hopeful of and and have had discussions about, but, you know, no one said you are coming out to make this film in Australia or whatever yet. Um, I I mean, if I was in Dreamtown, I would I would say I'd love to do something very different to to Irving Thalberg. I, I, I love it, but mo- most of my career has been relatively period work and Mank is almost as modern as it gets for me. And so I've all I've made it to I didn't even make it to 1940. I made it to 1937 and, and no further. So I don't even know what happens in the Second World War. Um, so I would love to do something like really modern and and messy. Um, but that is just luxury, you know. I'd also love to just keep working and paying the bills because uh, I, I just really love doing this job. And when I'm allowed to do it, it feels, especially at the moment, it feels like a blessing. But um, at the, I, I, I'm having real trouble seeing beyond next the next 24 hours at the moment. I don't know about you. I think this this year's just made me like stop p- picturing the future too much. Apart from wanting to just sort of uh, get really physically close to people as soon as I legally and, and phys- safely can. Um, I just want to uh, like immediately, I just want to enjoy this ride because it's never happened before. It may never happen again to be in, to be in something that, that um, is on this scale and that I was so passionately in love with the process of making it, it may never happen again. So I just want to enjoy this bit. Um, and then, and then, of course, when it comes out, everybody will be knocking at my door saying, "Oh, you have so many jobs! Please take my job." And I'll say, "No, I have too many jobs already." I mean, to be fair, when Man comes out, I would you got every right to expect a few calls. I think it's a brilliant performance and a brilliant. Film. Oh Lord knows! I think you can, you can. I think you go mad if you go. 
December it comes out December fourth. December fifth, <laughs> I'm gonna. Pfft, you just print. You just print me that Oscar certificate. I think you could go. You could go mad uh, waiting for it to come because it'll never come if you do that. So you just got to keep keep pl- uh, keep plowing on. Yeah, well, enjoy and, the ride. It's, it's a fantastic and enjoying film. the ride. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic film to be associated with. So I mean, I've, I'm honestly, I asked you if you've sort of seen it with your your parents, but my the first thing I'm going to do next Friday night is just call my mum and dad and be like, "Have you seen it yet?" <laughs> oh, brilliant, uh, brilliant! Just, you know, uh, funnily enough, uh, your I mean, I love how you guys and your website was um, w- like one of the first, if not, or maybe the second. It was what like it was. I think it was how I found out that the film was being made. Oh, right. Because <laughs> I, I, I know, is that funny? I got, because uh, I got sent the tape through, I think very beginning of August or end of July. I can't remember. I think it was end of July, actually. And and the first thing you do, of course, is like Google it and see, see what else there is to know about it. And I saw uh, your article saying that Fincher was making it with Gary Oldman. I was like, oh, this well, this could be. Oh, it's going to be in black and white. So uh, it's come full circle. You, you, um, you let me know it's happening, and I and I delivered the goods. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm just pleased. I'm just pleased we got one hit on the site. So yeah, you got yeah. That that one person. That's my IP address on your website. You you can come find me. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much today, Fred. It's been a real thanks, pleasure man. To see you and uh, absolute yeah, pleasure. Of, I've loved it. Best of luck with everything you've got coming out, and I hope. Um, thank you, pal. Taste that. Cable and that Gilbert grows up to be a lovely dog because my dog's a nightmare at the moment. But we're getting oh, it's just uh, it's it's the adolescence, man. It's hard. It's hard. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Thank you, pal. That was really lovely to talk to you. Take care, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey, you 